What's going on everybody? It's your man Overtime here coming to you with a new segment today. And today's topic is gonna be feeders. Yes, I said it, deer feeders. I know some of you guys out there are big public land hunters or private land hunters and you're, oh, if you're putting the feeder out, you're cheating. You gotta put food platter. You gotta go out and find a natural browse and blah, blah, blah. Well, guess what? Not everybody has the opportunity to put food plots on property. As somebody like me here in New Jersey where I'm in the fight camp, I can't just put food plots on people's property that give me permission to hunt behind their house, hunt on their farms, whatever it is. So, we gotta make do with what we can. And my question to you is what's the difference in going out, putting a feeder or a pile of corn or a pile of apples, whatever it is I'm using, bait out, then you going out and putting in a food plot to get the deer to come in to your mineral site your licking branches and everything that you put out by hand what's the difference there really isn't much much of a difference other than they try to say ehd and all that cwd is spread from bait piles and all that baloney whatever they can do the same thing or they eat the same ear corn in the field that's the way i feel so with that being said we're going to get into this topic today on feeders and different kind of feeders and which ones i prefer and which ones are cheaper and which one you get more for your money's worth and which one will last you a longer time so with that we're going to start at the bottom at the cheapest row and that right here is just a simple gravity feeder now a gravity feeder you can make on your own more tree sells a great gravity feeder it's just a bag that hangs from the tree you put it on the ground and you fill it up and as the deer eat the corn continue to come out the bottom this right here i built myself I went and got some PVC, I can't remember what size exactly, and got a couple U-joints or whatever you need to call, and cut my own, cut it about four or five feet long, put the U on, so I would do, I go out and get a bracket or whatever, take it, fasten to the tree, I've also done it, just put a long screw through here into the tree and it pivots a little bit, you put one at the bottom or something at the bottom to keep it from swinging, put a screw on each side to keep it from rocking, whichever way you want to do it. You can put corn in here, you can put a lid over it, you can put a bag over it. You can stuff a shirt in there just to seal the hole to keep squirrels from coming out. And they'll come and they'll feed out the bottom. And as they're eating from the bottom, they constantly start working its way down. Slowly working its way down until it's on the way out. You come back in, you refill it up. So, that's the gravity feed. Now as I go through this, I go back and talk about the differences, what's good and what's bad from each one. Yeah. Right here, this is your first spread of feed you can get. This is a cheap one. I believe I got this like three, four years ago from Sportsman's Guy for like 30 bucks, I believe it was on sale. This is a spreader. Right there is the battery go here. Corn, you put a corn here, it's only five gallons, so it doesn't last that long. If you're gonna use one of these, you have to be smart about the way you put your time. If it goes off every day, make it once a day for a short spirit. For for short, short spurts of time. Or every other day, whatever it is. Or the days you plan on hunting, set it so you know when it goes off, you're gonna come. You got a battery. These all take a six volt rechargeable. It could be six rechargeable or non rechargeable battery. They cost like eight, nine bucks. You can get them from your bow shop, you can get them at Walmart, Sporting Goods, Sportsman's Guy, Cabela's, they all sell them. And yeah, let's put the corn in here. It holds about one 35 pound bag of corn. Let it go out. These usually run out. If you set it going twice a day or once a day, it'll last about a week, week and a half, depending on how long you set the time. Again, this is a pretty cheap one. Then, next up, we got a feeder, like a stand feeder, but we got the plastic version. But again, this is a lot cheaper than the steel version, the 55 gallon drum. This is 30 gallons, that's 55 gallons. This will hold, I think, 250 pounds of corn, which is quite a bit. As you see, I got it covered in chicken wire. We'll go over that here in a second as we come back over. But again, this one costs about 130, I believe. 130, same six volt battery. Got a vomit guard, again, we'll talk about that here in a little bit. 250 pounds of corn. This I can put out, this will last about 45, 50 days with my settings going off twice a day with 
just a short second, short burst of time. Now this one right here, this is the big coon. This is the big boy. This is the mamba of them all. This is the 55 gallon mall tree NXC Hunter feed. Now, this right here, these aren't cheap. These are about, you can find them somewhere like 300 bucks. Again, 55, or yeah, 55 gallons. That's a lot. Um, my buddy Stavon, he has one of these on his property, and it lasts for a few months before it has to go out and refill. But depending on the time you spread, he doesn't hunt the property that much, so it's very little time spurts every day. And this is heavy duty, and this one here, this will last you a long time, if not a lifetime, as long as you take care of it. Now, we're gonna go back from top to bottom and talk about why I like each, each one and which one I like best. All right, right here, the big corner, the 55 gallon. This, of course, is gonna be my favorite. Why? It's made of a metal or steel drum, metal drum. You ain't gotta worry about this falling apart. This is gonna last pretty much a lifetime, a lifetime of hunting. You might only have to change probably the battery. Um, the feeder down here, it already has a varmint guard on it, so you don't need to do the varmint guard there. And the varmint guard, exactly what it is, it's called a varmint guard. It keeps the varmints out, the squirrels, the raccoons, the rabbits, things like that. Now with that, as you see, it's covered in chicken wire. That's my way to keep the squirrels and everything from chewing through that. And when we get to that, and that one, and the smaller one, we go over that, and what happens. With this, you don't have to worry about that. Squirrels not chewing through this, they can climb up here. They're not gonna get the feed out of the varmint guard. They can't because it's such a small hole, but it's small enough to where when it spins, the spin caster goes off, the corn is still gonna come out. This isn't gonna rust the way this is gonna hold. Even if it rusts on the outside, it's not gonna leak. So water isn't gonna get inside, leak down to the motor, and ruin your spreader. So you ain't gonna worry about that. Again, 55 gallons, that's a 30 gallon drum. And that holds 250 pounds A 55 gallon that's 25 gallons more so this will probably hold 400 400 plus so this is going to be my go-to i go out fill it up at the beginning of the season uh, i'm about to take this down one of these down to my property in kentucky this weekend coming up and with that i can go out so now I fill it up put it on slow time i can switch it out put the gravity mount on it, whatever it is. I think I'm gonna put the spin cast on. Leave the spin cast on this one and set it for a slow time once a day, get the deer coming. Right now it's mid-June, about September, first week of September. We go down there and hunt. You should probably be about here. Still have corn, top it off, hunt for the week, whatever it is, it'll be gold. Right there, strong, 30. Not much you can complain about with this one. And it's got a couple extra pegs. I can see it go taller. So right now I can add two more pegs this so it'll probably end up like this high where if I was in bear country, the bears wouldn't be able to get to it. So for me, I'm hunting whitetail. I don't have to worry about any of that. Then we come over to the 33 gallon drum. Now, the 33 gallon drum, I used this all last season. It's great, but as you see, like I said, it's covered here with chicken wire. What I didn't like about the plastic part of it is that the squirrels if they don't get the corn they're gonna eat something and as you see on the top of this plastic on here they start eating through the lid i've had them where they ate out the bottom and the corn falls to the ground but it ain't just that that i can fix by covering up with chicken wire and whatnot but if you don't do it from the get-go and they get the holes going through they start chewing you see them get on the side here and they get the holes going through the top when it rains the rain goes in, and you have corn and Big and J mixed like I do. The B2B, when it gets wet, it goes moldy. And then on top of that, the water works its way down to the motor. And then the spinner, which happened in a couple of these, the spinner gets wet, the motor gets wet, then it's fried. It no longer works. But 250 pounds of corn will last you a good amount of time. It'll last about a good month before you gotta go out and refill. And that's going off two times a day, about five, six seconds at a time. Now, the varmint guard is something you can get. That's something you have to get separate. It doesn't come with the feeders. Like those, they got new feeders you can get and attached to the bottom that has the varmint guard built on. But this one didn't come with that. And at the time, they didn't have that. So I purchased the varmint guard, I think it was like 34, 35 bucks, attached to the bottom. 
very simple it snaps on and it keeps the squirrels from hanging off here and getting corn out of the whole the corn come out because there's nothing to protect the spin caster now getting a lid off on this pretty simple twist it one way and it pops right up take it off put it back on that one over there is a little more complicated you got to have a drill with a half inch bit you go up you undo the bolt pop the lid off fill it up put it back on again that would be more tedious because you have it way up you don't come out with a ladder you just go out hanging hunting or whatever and you're going to check on it you have to have a drill you have to have a ladder and everything to get up top unless you have an atv you can stand on it but then you still have to have a drill and because of that that's the only thing i don't like about that but again i'll fill it up one time and it'll be good for the most of the people this one here like i said this one I had these about uh, three years ago they worked well they did good at calling deer when it went off in that plastic the corns are hitting the plastic the deer knew what it meant they came in but like i said look at the top here see the chew marks all around it the squirrels got to that pretty easy and once they get to that the rain gets in i ruined them a few motors this way and on top of it to hang it you have to find a way to hang it from the tree so when i would go out to a site to hang one of these i would come out with like a joist you build like a joist that will make like a 90 degree angle with a bar arm that's going to hold it from falling come off the tree put it in with like lag bolts and then put a hook on it in so i can hook it where it was high enough to where when it spread the deer can just come up and eat out of the bottom but again these didn't last that long last about a week and a half maybe two weeks max if i slow it down the time and then the gravity feeder the thing i don't like about this the thing i like the most is it's very cheap very inexpensive pvc didn't cost that much at the time right now prices are crazy at the hardware store and stuff so it might be a little bit more um just took a can of brown and green spray paint spraying the brown and green with little stripes to blend it in with the tree but the thing i love about this is it's so cheap easy to go out you just go with the back corn you hang it by this high so the deer can get their mouth in there i can take the back corn put it on my shoulder tip it in fill it up the thing i don't like about it is the deer can feed off of it all day long so if you get a group of hungry deer i've had a few times I've had this on the tree a whole group of hungry deer come in and take turns uh, they get like one 30 pound bag in here and it lasted maybe two days max i'd go back out and refill it and refill it and refill it and before you know it it was just like all right enough but there's other things you can do diy version you can do with this take a big pvc pipe stick it to a tree dig a hole in the ground put it in the ground then scoop out a little bit and fill it up to the point where the corn comes out and as they eat from the hole just a little bit comes out a little bit comes out at a time now i have some of those around as well another thing you can get like i said you can get the gravity feeder kit this right here is the gravity feeder kit you attach this to the bottom it's not put together right now but as you see how it looks there's three different spots the corn come this is for the big one and the plastic one here the corn comes out in three ways and it's sitting there and the deer come and they feed it's similar to this one you use the gravity feeder port portion of it before season comes in when you're trying to get the deer their protein their minerals you get the antler growth good herd uh, management you get a nice and fat ready so when season come you know they're healthy you know they've been eating and you're gonna have some big deer on your property now these aren't the only feeders you can get there's all kinds of feeders out there i actually think that one right there is an american hunter that isn't actually a mulcher i had that for years now like i said three four years ago i bought that but i know Maltry has a great 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 product i've used this for a whole season and held up the battery right now is still good in this never took it out i put it in before season started actually this week last year i put it out battery is still good to this day you can put solar panels on these i have some of those i just haven't had to put them on yet i will put it on this one in kentucky to keep it going for a long time since i'm only down there very little time i'm down there maybe once or twice a year so since i'm going down next week meet my father i'm gonna put this out put a solar panel up i'll put the trail cameras out i put a hme uh solar panel 12 volt battery kit on those to keep them going because i won't be there for a while but i know they'll last the batteries will last for a season so with that being said if you live in a state where it's legal to bait give it a try 
whether you go out into a pile of corn somewhere between two trees or on the middle of the ground, the middle of your field, whatever it is, if you get a feeder, a gravity feeder, or there's more tree, they got big balls, they got all kinds of different brands. Whichever one you can afford and you want to do, give it a try if it's legal in your state. If not, don't be a poacher, don't get in trouble, that's a hefty fine. I know people have done that and they're not happy with the fine they get. The fine costs way more than it costs than this feeder. So, go ahead and try a spreader feeder, a gravity feeder, put it on the ground, mineral, attractant, whatever you want to use. If it's legal in your state, go ahead, give it a try, let me know what you think. If you're seeing this episode, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you found this helpful. Leave me a thumbs up if you like it. Thumbs down if you didn't. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. If you have any tips or tricks, anything you do, if you have one of these and keep farming this out, go ahead and leave that in the comments. If it doesn't help me, it might help someone else. Other than that, as always, we're going to sign out. Love. Peace. Afro peace. Peace.